today is dump day. All this stuff that I took out from the demolition last week, Friday, is now off to the dump. This isn't all of it. This is a lot of it. This is all the bathroom floor material, which weighs a ton, uh, mostly. Some, a lot of the shower, this fake marble shower stuff. And I still have a cast iron tub and some other things I've got to take on a second run. Uh, but this is part of my day, day two. As a contractor, there are many, many times where we are, we, I'm speaking for myself, where I'm doing things for my customer that preclude me from being at their house. Today is one of those days I have probably three or four things that I need to take care of. One of them is, as you just saw, going to the dump. The next one is I have to go to Lowe's to pick up a shower valve because she doesn't have a proper valve for me to, to uh, install. Um, also, there's other times where there's a, uh, a discrepancy at Home Depot. They don't have a product. They don't have, say, a shower pan liner that's big enough for me to use. So I have to go to a specialty store to go pick that up. Um, Bullnose is another example. That same specialty store I have Bullnose made so I can drop them off uh, the day before I need them. I have them done overnight sometimes. Sometimes it's a two day turnaround. Then I gotta go by there and pick that up. Those locations are definitive. So wherever my job happens to be, it's way over there. I still have to go way over there in the opposite direction to go do that stuff. And so there might be two or three hours of my morning where I'm not at my customer's house, but it doesn't mean I'm not working doesn't mean that I'm not still focused on the job as I am today I want to be there I want to be there right now doing all the plumbing stuff but I can't because I have to do this other stuff so just to let you know if you have a contractor coming in and uh, there are times where they're not there it doesn't mean they're not working for you it means that they're taking up for all the stuff I I've even heard of um, of instances where the contractor will have the customer go to Home Depot and pick up stuff. I would never ever do that. I know what this stuff is that I need. And it, it yeah, I would never, never ever do that. I am at the dump now. And look at this, look at this line. See, this is another reason why it's so difficult for me to plan a day. Look at this line. This is ridiculous. So they have, this is the dump I go to, and they have two different lines coming in. One is over in that direction, and it goes for about half a block. And then I'm lucky because I'm in this lane going that direction. So the two lines going in there. Uh, on a good day, the dump will take me probably 10 minutes to get inside. This is not a good day. I'm, I'll be sitting for the next 30, maybe 40 minutes, just trying to get rid of this load and move on. Next stop, Home Depot. I always pick the orange pill over the blue pill. That's just me. I got what I need, now on to Lowe's. The blue pill, yikes, don't tell anybody I was here. I have spent the last almost hour and a half trying to hunt down um, a particular valve for this slider that I have on the other side. My customer had bought a Delta for the other side, which doesn't match even the trim kit. The Delta is square and this is round, and this is not the exact one that matches the other side with the slider. But I'm at Ferguson, and Ferguson is a great supplier of stuff. They're also a distributor for Moen. And, um, Apparently, what they sell at Lowe's, uh, which is this, they don't even sell that trim kit and all that stuff at Ferguson. So Moen has some type of deal with uh, with Lowe's that they sell separate items that plumbing supply places don't sell, and vice versa. So I have solved nothing, and I think the only solution to the problem that I'm having is buying two of these 
And um, so here's the conundrum that I face. I, I said, okay, well, let's just buy the valve itself because that's all I need for one side and I'll put this on the other side, right? Well, the valve itself is $111. This is $114. So it doesn't make any sense to buy the valve. You just get two of the whole setups from Lowe's and be done with it, I guess. But now I have to go back to find out if this trim kit and all this stuff matches um, the brush nickel that she currently has. So, all this time that I'm spending trying to solve these issues um, eats up my day. I am finally back at the job. So that goes in like so. Anytime you deal with PVC glue, you want to kind of give it a turn so that way you have good adhesion all the way around. Or at least I do anyway. A habit I got into years ago. light pitch up so I have water positive water flow going in and that's it so these two are set in place it is ready to uh, to get plumbed in well the drain part is ready to get plumbed in anyway uh, by the way these are called bushings I call them increasers or reducers but proper term is bushings. Now, now this is my center line, so I'm going to try and get my hot and cold coming up through the floor right here. If I don't have, yes I do, I have a floor joist in the way. I'm going to try the best I can not to have to uh, take out this plywood like I did in the shower area. Then I have to move those over, so I'll have to put tees on here to get hot and cold over there through the floor. And again, floor joists in the way, so I'll do the best I can not to have to remove the floor. And I want to get started on that. Then I've already got my pipe in place for my drain. Uh, my shower drain, which won't be set yet. The pitch on here is perfect with this going up to the top of the floor. And it's already on that center line by the time I glue it back it in. It'll be ready to go. But before I glue that in, remember I have to do all this plumbing that's rework with uh, the three quarter line. So, right after I get through over there, I'm going to jump back over here and hopefully get all that done in the next few hours. I was not successful in not lifting up the floor. I had to come over here because this is my center line. So, I had to open that up and I had to open that up. So I have one long trough that I'll have to fill in, but you know, it's pretty evenly cut. Anyway, I have most of the plumbing in. As I said before, I cut up those two lines um, where the sharp bites were and put T's on them, both here, hot and cold. And then I just brought those over, screwed into the, or drilled into the um, floor joist rather. Brought those up, those get sharp bites eventually once all that's sweated. And then I'm getting ready to do all this also old-fashioned pipe cutter. Uh, I don't do three-quarter very much, so I had to buy this today. I could not find um, an open-end pipe cutter. These are absolutely wonderful. If you ever do any type of plumbing at all, even a DIYer, I highly recommend one of these. And I will show you why. You would have to do a fair, a fair comparison to understand the reasoning. There's my line I want to cut right there. So all you do is slip that on there and turn it. After about the fourth turn, sixth turn, <laughs> it's just, it's cut. It's so easy. More to the point, it can get into tight spaces where that bulky thing will not. Um, and you don't have to turn anything 
to tighten up on the pipe, it self tightens. I love this thing. Uh, so those two are ready. I will sand both ends. on both ends. Well, not on the top end. Sorry about that. The top end is going to get sharp by caps. I've already got flux inside of my 90s. Slip that on there. That's not wanting the seat. Or maybe it is already. Double check that one. Okay, that one slipped in there really well. And that's it. This is ready to solder. Another thing you want to invest in if you're going to do any kind of plumbing is a headlight, literally a strapped headlight. The battery pack is down there. This just gives you access to areas you can't normally see. Um, when I'm doing the sweating part, and I'm suggesting this to you if you haven't swept pipe before, especially around wood and all this uh, flammable material, that you have a fire extinguisher handy and or a bucket of water. The bucket of water comes in handy when you're sweating certain objects that you want to cool fast. You can dip it in the bucket of water, but also if you get in a sticky situation, have a bucket and a sponge ready uh, just to, um, to be on the safe side. Another couple of things that you want or a thing that you want, which I always carry in my tool pouch, is a mirror, an extendable mirror, so that after I've done all my sweating, I can't really show because my hands are busy doing all this stuff, so I'm not going to be able to show the sweating on the pipe, but you can see clearly at the bottom of that connector, uh, once the solder flows, that the solder has flowed properly into the connector, that you don't have any voids. And there's no way you're going to be able to see, especially on that T, there's no way you're going to be able to see that without a mirror. And so the bottom of the T is what you're looking at with the mirror. And that's what you need to be able to see when everything is sweated to make sure that you don't have any voids or holes when you turn the water on. Very important mirror, flashlight, fire extinguisher, or and or some water. So I'm going to get busy on sweating all this stuff in. All right, these are finished. The sweat connections have been made. As you can see on all of them, uh, the flash, or sorry, the mirror really helps, especially on the bottom here. What I should have done, um, sometimes I'm thinking, sometimes I'm not. Today is a non-thinking day. What I should have done is the bottom of that T, I should have sweated in first, let that cool, and then done these pipes because it was a little difficult to get to, but you know, it is what it is. Those are the sharp bites I'm gonna put on there temporarily until the cabinet's ready to go in. So these will stay in there for the next few weeks until the job is done for the next 10, 12 days or whatever. So that's done except for I'm gonna fill in that scab in a piece of plywood for that. Now moving on to here, I had to put a really good light on the subject because um, I need to see what I'm doing, obviously. We have a couple of things going on here. One, we have straight copper. Uh, that comes up to the soft copper, and the soft copper was bent around. I don't know why they did it in such a weird configuration, but it was bent around in order. It is what it is. <laughs> so that's not going to work. Um, can't use what's going on here. So right down there where the two elbows are at, I'm going to just cut off the pipe right there, and get rid of this whole setup, pull that out. Um, I've already cut over here. This is going to get moved over about two inches. My mark is center, so that will get moved over. Then I have a center mark down here, and I almost have a hole drilled, I think. Somebody else did that. But that's about somewhere around there is where my hole will get drilled for my left hot side. Once those are cut out, then I'll just put a couple of 45s over, over, and then up through the hole. I've got enough parameter to deal with on both sides here. So that makes life a little easier. Um, it's just getting down into this valley here. And then once that's taken care of, I can jump over here to the three-quarter and start doing my thing over here. 
and inevitably probably have to cut into that floor too. I don't want to, but I don't see a way around it unless I can move a pipe back there with a with a an up part. Um, hard to explain what I'm talking about. I'll I'll solder in an elbow with an extension of probably 10, 14 inches and try and get up under there to where that hole is at, exactly where that hole is at, and then pull it up through. And then the rest of it I can put a connector on and run the pipe up. That's what I'm hoping for. So I'm going to cross my fingers. I'm going to do a very quick demo of sweating pipe. A lot of people are going to PEX nowadays. I'm not one of those people that are going to go to PEX anytime soon for a lot of different reasons. But be that as it may, if you decide that you're going to do your plumbing, um, just be careful of those things that I'm mentioning. Um, make sure you have a mirror and a flashlight and blah, 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 all the other things I mentioned. Some people think I do sweaty, sweaty, sorry, uh, wrong adjective, that I do crappy sweats um, because I use, I use a glob of uh, solder. A method to that madness, the reason I use a glob of solder, the worst part is when you turn the water back on and you have a little pinhole leak or you have a little area where solder did never make it and you didn't see it even with the mirror and then you have to drain the whole house again and um, make that repair or two or three so yeah I use more solder than I need to but I would rather be safe than sorry you see whatever you're attaching your pipe to that's where it gets the heat don't put your heat on the pipe put it to the thing that you're attaching to no matter what that thing happens to be and let the solder run into that thing in this case a 90 and that's basically it and you don't want to touch it For a few minutes you don't want it to get loose. Um, you can dab a sponge on it. In fact I have one handy because I have a bucket of water handy. That will cool it off fairly quickly so that you can actually uh, move on with what you're doing. This is that little L thing. See how sloppy I am? But guaranteed it's all the way around and I don't ever have to worry about uh, little, little pinhole leaks. So this is a little L thing that I was telling you about earlier. What I'm going to try and do so I don't have to go up through the floor is I just soldered on this little 16 inch piece of copper which I'm going to try and get into that hole from up underneath. Uh, it may or may not work. If it does work then I can leave that alone and do that for both of those. Um, because eventually this is the same exact length that I'm going to need to tie into that three quarter. So I was able to work it out. Here is a long, long length, which I don't need quite that much. I'm going to cut off the excess. But I was able to feed it through that hole. And then what I'll end up doing is attaching some extra pipe. I'll probably use it from there. Attaching some extra pipe with a connector to go up to the point where I want to stop at. I think it's three foot or... 36 inches, 38, 40, I forget. Anyway, the point being is that uh, now that I have it fed through there, I don't have to go through the floor. That's the whole point. Um, I'll have to attach that first because obviously I'm stuck with the three quarter line down by the floor, by the ceiling, as it were, down below. I can't move that. that has, that's going to stay where it is. Um, so I'm going to have to attach some more pipe to that because eventually that connector will be buried somewhere below. Hard to explain, but easier to do. So, 
So I finally got this connection done. Uh, it's like getting in a wrestling match with somebody. Um, as I told you before, well, I didn't quite disappear, but you know, by the time I lowered the pipe down to where it was level over here, uh, the connector with the rest of the pipe comes up about where I want it. Uh, maybe a little bit shy, but it's okay. It'll still match that other side because I can always cut those down to match that up. And then I'm going to replicate, that's the hot side, I'm going to replicate that over here somewhere with the cold side uh, with my other T. Trust me, that is like a wrestling match. I'm ready for a break right now. Um, I will get to this momentarily. But um, a couple of other things I wanted to mention. I said if you do your own plumbing, I don't anticipate you could ever do, well, maybe, I don't know, some of that stuff you might be able to do if you've had a little practice, practice in your workshop or something the way I just showed you on how to sweat. Something like this with three-quarter pipe. Back in the day, I used to do a lot of three-quarter pipe with water heaters and stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm fairly adapt to it, but it's a little different than the half inch. And something like this that you have to wrestle is, is something that I don't know that I would suggest that you try and do. Um, another thing I wanted to mention also, there's there's a lot of sweat connections going on here. So a couple of things. One, when you go to turn the water on, make sure you have a partner, girlfriend, wife, somebody who's on the cell phone with you. So when you're downstairs or wherever your cutoff is, you're both on the phone together and that person is turning on the water ever so slightly as they hear, hear the rush coming through the house. You know, you're up here, standing here with a complete silence, making sure you don't hear any hissing noise. Make sure that all your connections that you've checked prior to that, but also um, you're, you're listening for any hissing noises and you're looking for any water leakage. If at a certain point you either hear something or you see something, tell that person at the meter to turn it off, turn it off, and you'll have to open up all your valves downstairs, your kitchen sink and stuff like that to drain everything off and then go ahead and fix it. That's why I try and make sure I'm on point with my sweat connections. And last thing, um, I want to let you know this, I think it's worth mentioning. Anytime I do uh, sweating with pipe, i.e. fire, I always, always, always do this earlier in the day as possible so that I'm working on something else in the meantime and if an ember or something happened that I was unaware of that I didn't take my sponge where's my sponge at? I keep it around um, and wipe off things or squeeze some water on some things that maybe I got some heat on um, as I did over there you can see it's kind of wet um, that I'm on point I'm here and you know I'm not going to cause the house to burn down another thing too I never encapsulate everything this flooring will not go back in I said I was going to pour the pan today, I lied. This flooring will not go back in. That will not go back in until overnight. Overnight when the water pressure is back on, and I'm sure that there's no issues anywhere, that's when I go ahead and encapsulate everything. So anyway, I'm going to take a break and shut up. And now this is all put in, all of these connections for the hot and the cold, for the hot and the cold on that side with the caps on, and the hot and the cold on this side with the caps on. Don't have the valves yet, unfortunately, otherwise I would want to be doing that right now. I have, on occasion, sweated in valves after I put in my pan layer and mortar all that stuff. I don't like to because I don't want the possibility of some of the solder hitting the shower pan liner. But in that case, I'll put a board or something down there. But because I don't have the valves yet, um, I can still wait. The preponderance of my day has been spent doing all this plumbing, as you can see. It's just very time consuming. By the time you're done, you're like, wow, I really didn't do anything, but if if you take each individual thing from, you know, the four hours or so that I've spent on this, you would understand why this takes so long. Um, so, it's ready to go. I, I have double check, actually triple check, because I double checked before, all of my connections, every single one of these sweats, every single one of these sweats, I have double check, triple check to make sure that the solder is right. I would rather I'd rather add a little extra solder right now if I had a doubt than to have to go through the whole process of draining the house and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the water on, get this, uh, get this out of my, uh, my hair for right now, and move on to something else today. Okay, I have turned the water, well you turn the water on by the way, whatever valve you have, only do it far enough to where you hear water start to rush. Don't turn it on all the way real quick. So the whole house is starting to fill up. What I do 
to find out if my water's up here yet. So far it's just air. For the pressure to build up to be sure that there's no leaks. Oh, by the way, if you ever hear your pipes, your pipes rattling in the walls, it's because they're not anchored. I didn't show you over there, but there's two pipe clamps I put back after I was finished, so there's no rattling of the pipes. One last thing before I get out of here, um, there's not much more I can do, as I said, I'm not going to cover this up today. When I do the final glue-in of the drain, which I'm getting ready to do right now, make sure that you put a level on it. See, my bubble is gone, and if I lift it up, there's my level mark, and that's about half an inch, which is exactly what I want. About a quarter inch per foot, or more. It wouldn't hurt to have more. So make sure that that's done correctly before you glue everything in. Make your markings, if you're going to scab in a piece like I am, make your markings and all that stuff so that when you start cutting into the board, because the board is going to be nailed down, that you know exactly where you're supposed to be with your pipe. It would not be a good thing if you, uh, if you didn't know where your pipe was at, but I'm going to glue this together. Alright, it's been a couple, two or three hours since I was last on camera. Um, I lied and I went ahead and covered everything up. I'm convinced because I do this all the time. I'm convinced there's not going to be ever a leak. If there's not already, there's not going to be. Um, so there's no danger is going on there. My drain is glued in. As you just saw, a long piece came up. Um, I cut the hole in there and then I taper off the wood slightly below so that any water that should get into the pan, although I doubt much we ever would, but if it does, that'll have an easy access down into the leak hole. So that's how I do it. Put a level, um, don't have a level handy. But anyway, put a level on your drain, make sure that both directions is level. And uh, you are almost ready to go. We are almost, I am almost ready <laughs> to go with my shower pan liner, which will be tomorrow. Um, I'll put the blocking, the two by six blocking goes in between every single one of those all the way around first and then the pan liner will go in. Another thing I did off camera, um, I think I told you at some point that I was going to put these in here. I tried to get a full piece on this right side, but I have all these drywall nails that preclude me from doing that. So anyway, I did a short piece, but I need that piece there. So when I wrap my liner around, I, well, anyway, so I need that piece there. Then I toenailed this in and put in another piece here. Um, so it's a sheetrock screws that hold it in. You see it's still kind of loose. I don't anchor it at the bottom because when I put my wall board here and marry the two together, if if something's off here, I want this to give a little bit um, so I don't anchor, just so you know. Same piece up along the side there. And then this piece, remember I had some wire back there, so rather than having it this direction, I had it this direction, fit perfect, nailed it in the side, and we're good to go. So, to recap, not that I need to, but all the plumbing got done underneath here, all the plumbing got done over here, although I didn't cover that. Um, the drain is in, uh, my supplies are in for my both of my valves, which hopefully will be tomorrow, and um, that's as much as I could do today. Never seems like a lot, but uh, you know, tomorrow's another day. <laughs>